Hey everyone, Anthony here, and today I'm smoking the La Flor Dominicana La Volcada. Let's get into it. So before we get into the cigar, a little background about the brand. La Flor Dominicana is owned by Lito Gomez. You know, Lito's been around the cigar industry now for quite some time. He formerly was in the jewelry business, and then some years ago, actually during cigar boom years, I would say it was like 96, 97-ish, he came out with his first brand of cigars. And the evolution, when he first came to the market, a lot of his cigars were geared towards more of a mild to medium body smoke, which was very prevalent for the times. And to see like his evolution in the industry over the years, one of the greatest people in the industry, a character, easy to talk to, very humble. His son, Antonio, is in the business now as well and his son Lito Jr. is actually in the business. And his wife Inez actually has a hand in also, so it's a family business. And I think from the outside looking in, people think La Flor Dominicana is like this gigantic kind of factory and operation. In all reality, we've actually included them in one of our kind of boutique brands. And we know we caught some flack, we're like, well, La Flor Dominicana is not a boutique brand, but it's a boutique factory. The production is not large. You know, they had former number one cigars of the year in the Andalusian Bull. And everybody's like, well, why are they off the market? Why can't I find Andalusian Bull? It's because the resources obviously are limited. It's a smaller production factory. And obviously the product, the tobacco that goes into the Andalusian Bull, is actually has to be aged for longer periods of time to come up with a special blend. But you know, I've always said about Lido, he's an individual who's very creative and he's always kind of pushing the boundaries it's from a marketing perspective, the shapes of cigars. You know, he came out with the El Jaco some years ago, which was the small perfecto shape. You know, the Andalusian Bull is a very unique shape and there's always kind of a story and background into the, some of the, the shapes and the sizes and the blends that he comes up with. And they're usually kind of unique to themselves. You know, he has different lines, the Double Lajero series, which he's well known for. But in reality, he does like these one-off projects, like the cigar I'm smoking today, the La Volcada. That's a reference towards a portion of the tango, which pays homage to Lido's upbringing in Uruguay. You know, when he came up with the blend, he thought to himself, what's something that resonates with me, that's nostalgic to me, that has meaning to me? You know, so he came up with La Volcada. And then even though, you know, I could dance a little bit, I have some rhythm, I'm not gonna do the tango for you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spare you that. But when you think about the cigar and the tasting notes, it kind of dances across the palate. So that's about as far as I'm gonna go for a dance, but it wonderful flavors with the cigar. One of the leading notes of the cigar, which makes it very unique, it leads off with kind of like an anise and almost like a raisiny quality at the same time. There is some spice to it, but it has very ripe, round, rich flavors to it. You know, the makeup of the cigar is a San Andreas, so a Mexican wrapper. The binder's interesting. It's an Ecuadorian-grown Corojo binder, and the fillers are Dominican. So you have, obviously, multi-country blend when you talk about the complexity of cigar. That's an important factor. What does San Andreas bring to the table? San Andreas wrapper, to me, I always think of cocoa notes, coffee notes, and spice at the same time. Then we talk about Ecuadorian Corojo, which we see used a lot in wrapper varieties as a binder. It adds a layer of flavor that adds kind of an earthiness, a spice to it. And then the Dominican fillers are very well blended. Again, I think it has some spice to it, but I don't think it's overly stated. It's more of a round, rich cigar. And I wasn't kidding when I told you it dances across your palate. It really does. Because there's a lot of things going on, which I love about a blend, you know. When I'm looking for different flavor notes and they're coming jumping out at me all at the same time, like they're trying to get my attention. I love that in a blend. And I especially love it when something's robust and rich and round. Because, you know, that could be muted if you think about it. If a cigar is bold and rich, you would think it'd be more linear, maybe one note. But not with this cigar for sure. I think that Corojo binder, really sets this blend off. A lot of times we talk about how the binder is kind of an understated portion. You know, the rapper gets all the, you know, it's like the quarterback of the team. Everyone's like rapper, rapper, rapper. The fillers, of course. Then the binder holds the cigar together, but it adds combustibility, but it also adds layers of flavor. And then when you use a binder that's Ecuadorian Corojo inside of the cigar, it adds a different dimension to the cigar, in my opinion. As far as body of the cigar, 
I think it's medium, maybe medium plus for people who don't smoke a lot, but for a seasoned smoker, I think you would smoke the cigar considered medium body. And that's like a disparity. You know, when you think of La Flor Dominicana's portfolio, whether it's the chisel or the La Flor Dominicana double the hair line in general, there's a lot of controlled aggression there. Very spice forward cigar. As a matter of fact, a lot of people describe it as a spice bomb. As I said, Lito and his ability to blend cigars and have these one-off projects like this La Volcada, he really kind of thrives in that world. You know, he kind of reinvents himself when he comes up with blends like this. He did that with Lenox in the past. And the La Volcada to me stands alone. It's kind of unique to itself. You know, as a matter of fact, if you took the band off of the cigar before it was launched and gave it to me and said, you know, whose portfolio do you think this is in? Who, you know, what factory came out with the cigar? I would tell you I really love the cigar, but I don't know, and I definitely wouldn't nail it to Lido's factory just because it's very unique to itself. And I love the finish of it too. Very long, resonating finish. So if you're a fan of cigars that really have that kind of rich, you know, long finish that kind of coats the palate and it stays with you for a while, and, you know, I think it would make it for a great pairing. You know, today I have this Dalmore some scotch here, but I think it would pair well with anything, you know, from a whiskey perspective, even the Japanese whiskey you could do with it, but a bourbon for sure, it has enough round rich flavors to stand up to a bourbon, but because of its depth of flavor and its layers of flavors and nuances, I would say a good single malt scotch would be my choice, but it's totally up to you. You want to play with it? You're a tequila fan? You could do tequila as well. You could even do a port if you like. I mean, really it's wide open with the cigar. You have to know about it, it's just very complex, it's bold, it's rich, it's medium body, it kind of gets out of its own way, but it has a lot of layers of flavor. That's what you want in a blend. And one last thing I want to say about the cigar. You know, prior to cutting the cigar, you noticed there was a little pigtail at the top of it. I absolutely love the aesthetics of a cigar that's finished with a pigtail. I always say, like, when you see cigars stacked in a wheel, or what we call a rueda, you know, they're stacked in this wheel, and you see this pigtail with this glistening wrapper just staring at you, it's very inviting. If I was going to get a cigar made for myself, and it was coming out of my factory, I would probably do all pigtails except for maybe the shaped cigars. I just love the romance of it. I think it has a beautiful look. Presentation means a lot. We smoke with our eyes. The cigar's phenomenal in its own right, but that pigtail sets it off. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. I want to thank you for joining me. But before we depart, make sure you hit that like button, you smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you here next time. <music>